Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sabiha Sultana. Today we are going to start the chapter of Faith Standard from Geography, Earth, our living planet. There are eight planets in solar system. Among them, Earth is the only living planet. It is the third planet of our solar system. Earth is the home for all forms of life, like plants, animals, human beings, and many more. Because of its suitable distance from the sun, the temperature, life supporting gases, atmosphere, water cycle, etc. Even our earth is also called by many names like living planet, unique planet, blue planet, watery planet, so many things. To know more interesting facts about earth, let's get started. Chapter 1. The Earth, Our Living Planet. The content of this chapter is name of the earth, the size of the earth and distribution of water on it, continents and oceans of the world, latitudes and longitudes, time, local time, standard time and international date lines, all the things we are going to learn in this chapter. So let's start the chapter. In the introduction part itself, we have mentioned that earth, our earth is having so many names. It is called by many names like living planet, unique planet, watery planet, blue planet and many more. So those are all the different names of the earth. Let's know about the size of the earth. Distribution of land and water bodies on the earth. Earth is the fifth largest planet in sun's family. The diameter of the earth is approximately four times greater than the moon and it is around 107 times less than the sun. The total geographical area of the earth is 510 million square kilometers, of which 361 million square kilometers is covered by water, that is 70.78%, and 149 million square kilometers, that is 29.22%, is covered by land. Thus, the earth has unequal distribution of land and water. The ratio between the land and water bodies is 1 is to 2.43. So let's know the shape of the earth. The earth's shape is often described as geoid, which is literally means the shape of the earth or earth shape or oblate spheroid, which means the earth is flattened at the poles and bulge at the equator. You can refer the image in the background. The equatorial diameter of the earth is 12,756 kilometers and the polar diameter is 12,714 kilometers. Equatorial circumference is 40,076 kilometers and polar circumference is 40,008 kilometers. The difference of 42 kilometers in diameter is the proof for regarding the geoid shape of the earth. The land bodies of the earth are known as continents. There are seven continents. Those are Asia, Africa, North America, South America, Antarctica, Europe and Australia. Continents are the land masses of large size. Asia is the largest continent in the world while Australia is the smallest continent. The large water bodies on the earth are called oceans. There are four major oceans. Pacific Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, Indian Ocean and the Arctic Ocean. Of which Pacific Ocean is the largest and the deepest ocean while Arctic Ocean is the smallest and the shallowest ocean. The land and water bodies are unevenly distributed between the northern and the southern hemisphere. The northern hemisphere has 60% of land and 40% of water. So that's why it is called as land hemisphere. On the other hand, there is 81% of water and 19% of land in the southern hemisphere. So it is called as water hemisphere. The earth is spherical in shape. Therefore, it is difficult to locate the places the direction and calculate distance between places. In order to understand the relation between different places of the earth and their exact location, we have to understand their position, their distance from any fixed point and also their exact direction. To know the position, distance and direction east and west or north and south, a network of lines are drawn on the globe. These are known as lines of latitudes and longitudes. The horizontal lines are the latitudes and the vertical lines are the longitude. You can have a look at the image. So these lines intersect each other at right angle and create a network called grid or graticule. So now let's know about the latitudes. Latitudes is an imaginary line which joins all the places which have the same angular distance north or south of the equator. It is measured in degrees. The equator 
zero degree is the longest line of latitude. It is also known as Great Circle. This line divides the Earth into two equal halves, that is Northern Hemisphere and Southern Hemisphere. So it is equal to the circumference of the Earth. Other lines of latitude are of shorter length. The length of lines of latitude decreases with the distance from the equator. All lines of latitude are circles and parallel to the equator. So these lines of latitude are called parallels of latitude. There are 90 degrees of latitudes on each side of the equator. 90 degree of north and south are points. Including e equator, totally there are 181 latitudes. The ground distance between two degrees of latitude is 110.4 kilometers. So among 181 latitudes, we consider only seven important latitudes. You can refer the image. So now let's know about the important latitude. First, zero degree latitude, that is equator or great circle. Next is 23 and a half degree north latitude, which is also called as Tropic of Cancer. Another one is 23 and a half degree south latitude, which is called as Tropic of Capricorn. Another one, 66 and a half degree north latitude is called as Arctic Circle and 66 and a half degree south latitude is called as Antarctic Circle. Whereas 90 degree north is called North Pole and 90 degree south is called South Pole. Now let's know about the longitudes. The imaginary line that intersect equator at right angle joining the north and south are called longitudes. On the globe, longitudes are shown as a series of semicircles that run fra from pole to pole passing through the equator. All lines of longitudes are equal length. Lines of long longitudes are called meridians because all places along the same meridian of lo longitude experience noon or midday at the same time. The meridian passes through Greenwich has been chosen as prime meridian. It is marked as zero degree longitude. There are 180 of longitude to the east of Greenwich and 180 to the west. Thus, there are 360 longitudes. The zone between the prime meridian and 180 east longitude is called as Eastern Hemisphere. The opposite zone is called as the Western Hemisphere. The distance between two consecutive longitudes decreases gradually with the distance from the equator. This is because the meridians of longitude converge at two poles. On the equator, the distance between the two consecutive meridians is 111 kilometers. Now let's learn about longitude and time. There is a definite relationship between longitude and time. The earth is rotating on its axis and completes one rotation in 24 hours. This means 360 longitudes are covered in a period of 24 hours. This gives rise to a time difference of 4 minutes for every 1 degree of longitude. Now let's know about the local time. The time according to the longitude of a place or according to the position of the sun at that place is known as local time. This is based on the local meridian passing over that place. When the sun is shining vertically over the longitude, it is 12 noon at that place. All places situated on the same meridian have the same local time. Every longitude has its own local time. So it was about local time. Now let's know about standard time. As the local time varies from place to place, it would create considerable confusion if each place were to follow its own local time. In order to avoid confusion, many countries follow uniform time throughout the country. Such uniform time is based on the central meridian of the country or the meridian on which the most important city is located. This uniform time which is followed throughout a country is called standard time of that country. In India, 82 and a half degree east longitude is considered at the standard meridian of the country. It passes through Allahabad of Uttar Pradesh. The time based on this meridian is called the Indian standard time, that is IST. It is 5 hours and 30 minutes ahead of GMT. Now let's know about the time zones. In certain countries of the world, where the longitudinal extent is so large that there is often a difference of 3 to 4 hours between one part and the other, the land surface is divided into time zone. The whole globe is divided into 24 such time zones, so that the time in each zone differs from the other by only one hour. 
Large countries like Russia, USA, Canada and Australia have vast longitudinal extent. Therefore, they have different time zones. Russia has 11 time zones. USA and Canada has 5 time zones and Australia has 3 time zones. Next is international dateline. The problem of time in countries of the world was solved first by the standard time and by and then by the zonal time. But the circumnavigation of the world brought a new problem in keeping the correct date and day in the week for the travelers. Therefore, a line passing through 180 degree meridian diametrically opposite to GMT, that is Greenwich Mean Time, was adopted as the point where circumnavigation should make adjustments. This line is supposed to pass Pacific Ocean along the 180 degree meridian but makes short detours in order to avoid land masses. This is known as international date line because the date and day is changed whenever people crosses this line by ship or aeroplane. Any ship crossing this line from west to east takes a day twice. while the ship crossing this line from east to west drops one day so likewise we can adjust with the international date line so this was all about a beautiful earth a living planet this chapter gives us a brief knowledge about our planet earth so to learn more interesting things like this stay tuned and keep learning thanks for watching save our earth